Okay, so we were talking about the, first of all, we have Dennis with us today and I'm in San Francisco. He is in another country, uh, Jordan. I don't know if any, everybody knows where it's located, but basically it's by the Dead Sea, right? Yes, just uh, east of the Dead Sea. East, okay. And uh, surrounded by which countries? You have uh, to the north Syria, and then uh, out to the east you have Iraq, and also south with uh, Saudi Arabia. Oh, okay. So you chose voluntarily to go there? Uh, <laughs> yes and no. Yes and no. So uh, throughout my career, prior to coming here, I was uh, mostly working in these, these areas. Okay. Okay, so you lived, uh, let's say, two thirds of your life in the U.S. I would say one third, to be quite honest. One third. Yes. So you've been a lot overseas then. Yes. Oh, so two thirds of your life were outside the U.S. That's correct. Yes. Oh, how well, that's molding <laughs> you. I mean, do you feel now more of uh, a citizen of the other countries you went to, or? <laughs> Uh, yes and no. Uh, so I understand the culture. Uh, there are beautiful people. Uh, obviously, it, it's dependent on where you're located. You know, same in the United States. You know, it's just uh, situational dependent and uh, location dependent. But mm -hmm. uh, I understand the culture and uh, I enjoy my time over here. Sounds good. Sounds good. But do you feel that people are more uh, friendly then? They are. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So it makes life. <laughs> it's been my experience. <laughs> it makes life more sociable. Correct. Yes. Yes. Uh, although I, I'm not very fluent in uh, Arabic, but uh, I understand gestures. I understand. I'm able to communicate effectively uh, in order to tra travel as I need to. Okay. Okay. Nobody asks you where you're from, right? Oh, they always do. Of course. <laughs> oh, they do. They yes. do because of your accent. Correct. Yes. <laughs> Okay, okay. But when you communicate, you communicate in English. I do, yes. And there's a lot of people within this region, this country, that want to learn English and have, you know, pick up small pockets of English, you know, in their oh. vocabulary. Oh, okay. So when you go to the bank, for example, it's in English? Uh, so I don't bank here. I do everything online and it's through my bank okay. in, back in America. So how about if, let's say, you go to hospital? Is it in English? Uh, majority of it is in Arabic, uh, so but I'm able to communicate with uh, some of the staff as needed. Um, and as far as the bank, just to back up, uh, I use the ATM. I do offer ATM in Arabic or English. Oh, so it's a kind of a bilingual country. Correct. Yes, and they all everybody takes uh, Mastercard or Visa, any kind of plastic. It, it's it works all the time. And if you use cash, cash is king, obviously anywhere. Oh, wow. Of course, of course. People use the credit card as often as in the United States? Um, I would say less so, from what I've noticed. Mostly it's a, a cash-driven environment. Yeah, because I don't carry cash in the United States. I mean, <laughs> everybody yeah. has uh, the either the, the credit card machine or they have uh, one of those things that you stick your thing in. Right. Right. I mean, they have the credit card machines here as well as like or at the restaurants and everywhere in the gas stations, um, but not all the time they're working. So, ah, OK, <laughs> so you go to the cashier and you pay cash. Yes, I, I see. So so when you um, most of your life is centered about around, uh, let's say, uh, the people you do business with and then. Yes. Your your friends, uh, I would say that you meet along the, the way or things like that. Correct. Yes. No. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, my business keeps me within the region, and uh, a lot of the people that I associate with, both uh, professionally and uh, uh, socially, uh, yeah. they're uh, former uh, or still within the service industry that I'm in. Okay. So uh, not to divulge uh, your age or anything, you lived in that region how many years? <laughs> uh, off and on since 1990. Okay, so you can technically say that you have dual citizenship or maybe you already, <laughs> you already do have it, right? You uh, have I, so I have, a, 
I have like a residency <laughs> card for Jordan, oh, uh, but uh, but I can't really claim residency or uh, citizenship because I wasn't born Jordanian. So um, you can't be a Jordanian unless you were born here. Okay, because I wasn't born in the U.S. and I have dual citizenship uh, okay. with, with Europe. So France allows people to have dual citizenship. It's just an agreement with the U.S. Right, yes. Yeah, so they don't have it with the Jordanian, I guess, uh, for some reason. But maybe there's not enough people requesting it, the dual citizenship because uh, here we have to be U.S. citizen to vote. So people are kind of compelled to to ask for that citizenship so they can vote if they're here long term, as right. opposed to where you are, where people don't vote as often. Of course, right, understood, yeah. yeah. And then you can also get, uh, 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 what is the mail-in ballots as well, which obviously in the past I've heard, they're not very accurate, they don't come in in a timely manner. <laughs> oh yeah, today's the last day to mail your ballot for the primary of California. No. Oh. So, but since you don't live in California, it doesn't matter. Right. But um, yeah, we had a very, very uh, surprising election so far. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> Nikki Haley <laughs> just won Washington D.C., which mm. is the first state that she won. Uh, okay. Trump on all the others. <laughs> but we'll see how the cookie crumble on Super Tuesday coming up. Okay. And uh, you don't have to vote in any of these 15 states, do you? Uh, no, I honestly, I, I don't vote and I haven't oh, for quite some time. Okay, okay so that's yeah, so. that solved the problem at this point. Right. <laughs> well, right. I mean, two thirds of my life has been outside of the country, so. <laughs> but I still pay taxes, so I should, I guess. <laughs> so what is your last ties with America then? Do you have something going, like a business or something? So the company I work for right now, they're based out of America. Oh, um, so I just have to, those right. are your ties. Okay, okay. Right. I just happen to run or be the middle the manager for the Middle East over here for that company. Okay, okay. So that makes sense. Uh, and they don't require you. Oh, yeah, they do require you to be a U.S. citizen, I assume. Okay. Right, yes. Yeah, and uh, basically contractor, so 1099. 1099, okay. You declare, yeah. you declare in America? Yes. Ah, okay, okay. Because it's mm -hmm. issued from a, an American company. Correct, yes. Wow. And as far as other logistics, like your health care, it's with the Jordan or with... I mean, you live so, there. Right. No, so I have, uh, through my former uh, occupation, I have a lifetime health care once I retired. Uh, but as far as going locally, uh, the, the medical care over here is very inexpensive. So that if you need a procedure or anything done, it, it's affordable. Okay. So you do your annual checkup and it's not an right. issue. Exactly. Dentistry, optometry, all that. Everything is affordable? <laughs> yes. Very affordable. And they don't, they don't really, the product itself isn't very expensive depending on what it is and where you go. Um, the price can range between uh, uh, maybe 50 to to $100 from one location within town to another location. So, and then the services are very inexpensive as well. Oh, wow. Well, I should go to Jordan then if I need an implant. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, I, I just hear let it linger and like... And because here it's like very expensive, uh, so I just say, "Oh well, later." <laughs> you know, it's not like a later turns a, that turns into days, weeks, months, years. So I understand that. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. So yeah. people actually travel mostly to Mexico for their dental care. Okay. Yeah. Right. So because similar, it, you know, kind of, yeah. Those countries are are really affordable uh, for the average uh, American. Right. And they get most of their training uh, in the United States or oh, even in really? Europe. I didn't know yeah. that. Oh, so yeah. they're actually in the United States certified. <laughs> right. <laughs> but then when they, after spending all that money to get it, their training in America, they have to earn much less in the country they go back to. 
Yeah, I don't know that uh, they would even spend a lot of that for the training because they there are programs out there and grants and you know make it more affordable and available. No, oh, you mean a dentist can get affordable uh, education here? Uh, I don't know for a fact, but uh, I've heard rumor that of yes. Oh, there are grants obviously for exceptionally bright students. But I know people run into like three hundred thousand dollar easy during their uh, in loans in loans, uh, just to <laughs> finish their education because right. they don't qualify for any financial help. Uh, mm. Okay. Yeah. So I don't know. You probably didn't go through that. So, but I know a lot. Uh, student loans uh, is a big business here in America. Even though we we just um, we forgave uh, last week one point five billion of student loan or more, but um, they, oh really? They try, they try to forgive some loans little by little when people cannot pay them back. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean that the national debt. I'm sure it's raising pretty quick. Yeah. So. Uh, so you you uh, said that you do like where you live, and yes. there are probably many reasons besides the fact that you have a job there, but um, you like, uh, among other things, the food, the, the weather, uh, or combination of many things. Combination of many things. Um, and being an American in a foreign country, especially Jordan, uh, kind of an oddity of sorts, and a lot of Jordanians want to go to America, and so they they quickly befriend you and want to communicate with you. Oh, and, uh, since yeah, you've been I'm, there two third of your life, did you go to school there? No, no school here. No. Oh, you did you complete your education in the United States? I did. Yes, after high school, then uh, my first my first uh, uh, occupation, and then from there I did that oh. for twenty five years, and then uh, continued to do something similar to that since. You know, retiring from that. Okay, okay, okay. So, uh, so you cannot actually compare the education system with America um, on your end. I mean, because you didn't so, attend any universities. Right. Okay. I, I can't compare the uh, the, the lower uh, schoolings, uh, high school, middle school. They do offer certain schools where they do uh, American curriculum oh, for they do? Uh, students. Yes. Wow. So high the school all the way down to K. Oh, they have private schools. They do, yes. Oh, so these teacher come from America, I assume, and then they get the... not not all from America, but uh, oh. they are um, usually uh, university educated through America or okay. England or British or Europe somewhere. But uh, yeah. everything is spoken and uh, put out in a uh, American and English uh, curriculum. Wow. And then they can move on easier to an American university at that point because they learn the language 100%. Right. And, and then all the students, so they're bilingual because they, they're definitely learning English. And obviously they're Jordanian or whichever. And uh, that opens up a, a larger arena for them as far as uh, university, usually uh, Europe or America. Okay. Okay. No, yeah. In, uh, in the United States, we have the French American schools. And okay. Uh, we have six or seven of them who are here in the Bay Area. <laughs> so there's oh, wow. there's uh, plenty of them all over the country also. But yeah, so they start them three hours in French, three hours in English from mm. three years old. And then at the grade nine, they can choose whether they want to go 100% with the high school American or with the bilingual uh high school from switzerland or the baccalaureate from, from okay so they have three choices to make at, at ninth grade whether they want to go one way or the other or inter go international right yeah i don't know if this uh if the uh switzerland the international baccalaureate is offered in jordan but it's probably offered in, in case people are um maybe uh have a level higher enough in english it's probably offered most likely yeah 
So uh, what is, uh, as you can see, the Bay Bridge behind me, yes. what are the most attractive um, sightseeing places in your country? I would say uh, Petra, to be quite honest. It's uh, all the ruins uh, carved into the mountainside or the, the hillsides. Uh, um, yeah, it, it's, it's a beautiful experience just to see the grandeur of it all and how, you know, how much detail they put into it. Oh, you mean sculptures? Uh, yeah, they, they built in, uh, I guess, their uh, business areas where there used to be a large uh, trading area where they would travel through. Petra was the place for all the, the spice trade and they had all these you know, businesses that were carved into the, the wall sides. Oh, yeah. I saw a post on LinkedIn that shows the roads that were built by the ancient Romans, you know, with big rocks and everything. That, right. And now what we build get deteriorated within a few hundred years. I don't, <laughs> I don't know if you saw that post, but it shows that even though they were not engineers, they were able to do something much better quality than now. <laughs> yeah, to endure the eons and millennia. Yeah. yeah, even buildings here, they don't last long because it's like squares, no, no different from the next building. <laughs> And there is no uh, sculpture or any real human input into them. It's right. mostly uh, uh, arithmetic uh, building, right. and I mean, just no, no, no human input for sure. Right. Well, if you build something that would last forever, then there's no maintenance, there's no spare parts, there's no need for people to do any repairs. So you're going to put a whole, you know, a lot of people out of work. <laughs> oh, so they do it and they take their time. They, uh, I mean, they do exist, uh, those people who do these uh, beautiful homes and mm -hmm. uh, they still exist. I'm sure, yeah. Uh, so, I mean, they had the Roman ruins over here in Jordan. They're scattered throughout the country. Oh. Uh, they have the Colosseums and those are still standing. They're, they're great uh, tourist attractions as well. Oh, they are tourist attractions? Yes. And As a matter of fact, the uh, notice the picture behind me happens to be uh, one of the uh, old ruins. Oh yeah, um, let me look. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I see the columns. Right. Oh, so it's like a tourist attraction. And that that's the biggest uh, income for Jordan is tourism. Uh, and since uh, COVID and any of the surrounding wars, and especially uh, to the west, it, tourism has really taken a dive. Oh, it's coming back now or still very limited? It, it's, they're still suffering from it because a lot oh. of people don't want to travel, realizing or thinking that it's not safe in Jordan. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Which is completely the contrary. I mean, they, uh, the government and the military, they're, they're widespread. They're very safe, huh? Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's, you know, law enforcement on every corner practically. So there's, there's always, you know, somebody that's policing. It's not a police state, so to speak. You don't feel yeah, like yeah, you're being... Yeah, protect you uh, in case. Right, yeah. There's yeah, plenty of security everywhere. Oh, that's awesome. That's yeah. awesome that you can even go out at 6 p.m. when it's dark and you're okay. Absolutely. Yeah, I have no problems walking around anywhere. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. that's awesome. So I know uh, some countries people stay home as, as soon as it's dark. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, right. probably not in your country. Um, no, not here. <laughs> but I, again, you know, I, I will caveat that with there are places that you probably shouldn't go as a foreigner or as a tourist. And then uh, just because of the, it's like in America, there's places that you don't travel to, you don't, you know, you know, be, you know, be seen at night or you know, alone. So uh, there's some pockets of that here in Jordan as well, but very few and far between. Okay, so is it inexpensive to go to Jordan besides the airplane ticket? Uh, is is the airplane ticket affordable, first of all? No. Um, I believe so. Um, <laughs> uh, compared to maybe 20 years ago, it's more expensive. But, I mean, that's just inflation and cost of rising. Or everything. Um, but uh, what makes Jordan expensive is the tax and uh, some of the, the items and products. Uh, if... If you're a vegan or you don't eat meat or anything, it, it's very cheap. They have uh, vegetable stores and fruit stands everywhere. 
Um, some regulated, some not. I don't think anything really is regulated in that sense. There's no FDA that I could think of or even know of. But uh, yeah, it's you can get food anywhere if you live within your means, and you know you don't like you know expensive type of uh, products or items. You can definitely uh, survive. Yeah. Yeah, but they do, I think uh, the culture there is to eat at least once a week meat, right? At least. Um, yeah. Not necessarily. <laughs> some, some people I know. No. <laughs> so okay. I, the part I live in, it happens to be a, a majority Christian community where yeah. they are Jordanian, but uh, they've uh, converted to uh, Christianity or their family has, and they're a part of it. Oh, yeah. okay. So this community uh, uh, eat a lot of fruit, vegetables, and stuff like that. Right. Absolutely. A lot of bread. Yeah, everybody loves their bread. <laughs> oh, is it like Italian bread there? It's not like the baguette? It's... No. <laughs> no. It's like homemade bread. Correct, yeah. And then it's, they have a bread shop, uh, like you have coffee shops. I mean, every small little coffee stands, every place, every, uh, like, four in a row. If you, if you know, like, a strip mall in the States, You'll probably have uh, within that you know quarter mile. You'll probably have three coffee shops, coffee stands, maybe a butcher shop, uh, uh, maybe a liquor store in there, depending on where you're at. But uh, they they tend to repeat themselves throughout, and it's pretty common as you drive through the areas. Oh, so it's a good business to start then, bread making and pastries. And... I wouldn't so so much uh, not so much pastries. Uh, they do have like desserts uh, stores, and they tend to be a little more on the high side or expensive. And that also depends on where you go. Um, what, what's your your taste or your budget can handle? Okay, yeah, there's uh, different uh, areas of the country with different prices. Correct. Yes. Yes. Okay. And you can go to the lower income uh, regions, and you can get almost pretty much the same thing as far as food uh, that you can in the higher well, for parts. Four quarter of the price. Right. Exactly. You got to have the time to go then. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you, you have to get out of your way to go. Uh, not necessarily, because there's a lot, a lot of places that if you live in the higher end community, then yeah, you'd have to go outside of your normal area in order to, to get the, the cheaper products. But if you're already within that region or you're traveling through, it's easy to pick up because it's everywhere. Oh, wow. Okay. okay. Yeah. But you don't want to eat too much bread because, too. I mean, I... <laughs> Uh, you'll go huge if you eat too much bread. But yeah. uh, everything in moderation is okay. Correct, yes. So what's the dish that you like the most? Uh, I mean, the the dish of the country. So the dish of the country and within the region would be mansif. Um, either chicken or lamb or some kind of meat. Um, usually it's lamb. It's uh, called mansif? Uh, it, Mansif, yes. Uh, basically, it's a uh, you have a, a huge uh, plate and it's and then a bed of rice on there. Uh, a jameed, which is a kind of a, a sour type of uh, milk or yogurt, and then that's used as a sauce. And then you have your lamb that's uh, boiled within that sauce or prepared, however, and it's placed on top with either grapes I've had with raisins, uh, almonds to decorate and to add to it. But uh, it's a dish that you use it with your hands and you ball it up and uh, you uh, you consume it. Okay. And how do you like it? It's okay? Oh, I love it. I love it. I, I um, So I know where to go get good massive and, and I know where not to go because the massive is bad. It depends on the chef and who prepares it. Just no, like anyone. Mi mi mixing dairy with meat, that's that's a no-no in vegetarian. And rice too. And rice, yes. Yeah, yeah. So they mix uh, without um thinking of uh, i mean if you get a good digestion system it's okay yeah. but right. it, but meaty uh mixing meat and dairy can give you an upset stomach <laughs> yeah. i've been uh, uh i've been having it for probably over 20 years so yeah oh I, I like okay. it okay yeah. sounds sounds like your your stomach is used to it <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah so you make it yourself at home i assume no, I, I don't. I don't. But uh, I know many people that do. And, oh, okay. But, You're not that much of a chef then? Not not for Mansif. So oh, okay. I, I, will, I will prepare other meals. Uh, but uh, no, I barbecue a lot. Yeah, yeah outside your, in your yard and stuff. Right. Oh. Well, 
nobody really has a yard around here. Everybody has a, a deck or a patio okay. or balcony. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So you <laughs> yard, yards are very scarce. Okay. So you can still cook outdoors and yes. safely without starting a fire or anything. Exactly. <laughs> I just happen to live on the uh, the rooftop of the apartment building, so and uh, it's yeah very accessible. Oh, it's very safe, also okay. Right. <laughs> so so yeah, so you situated close to the beach or very much uh, to inside the city. So in Amman, where I'm all the way up north, not all the way north of Amman, kind of a northwest portion. Okay, right. so Amman is the capital of Jordan. Correct. Yeah. And yes. that's where the main uh, airport is. Uh, that would be south of there would be the main airport, but yes. Oh, really? South of there? What's the city where the airport is? Not really a city. It's just the airport. So okay. you'd have to, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so it's, it's called the Amman Airport? Yeah, Queen Aliyah, Yeah, airport. Oh, Queen Aliyah. Oh, because yes. that's your queen. Yes. Okay. Uh, is she is she very I heard she she's very vocal she's smart she she's very yes she yeah, definitely in the media. she's not Correct. just a figure she's just very out there yes yeah she's uh I don't follow a lot of social media or uh any of the local news so much but uh when I do catch glimpses it, it she's definitely uh vocal. very involved with the community yeah that's good. That's this way she helps her husband. Uh, like uh, with Michelle and Barack Obama, we said we had two for the price of one. I guess that's the case <laughs> with Jordan. They're, it's a power couple. Right. Definitely. Right now, right now, they're talking about having Michelle Obama run for president because they don't think really. Biden is, <laughs> is fit for it. But we'll find out soon. Right. <laughs> We'll see. But although he last week he won um, Michigan, so he's oh, really? he's still very popular. I okay. mean, talking about the primary, not the final. Right. I, mean, I know it'll be in nine months. Uh, so okay, yeah. Right now it's the primaries. We'll see. Um, so since you don't vote, there's no reason to get into it. Period. <laughs> <laughs> because you don't know the uh, uh, you don't know all the other candidates yeah i i can't be really critical of anything that happens you know that i don't you know i really don't have much to say yeah yeah, yeah you're totally neutral at that point right yeah no and, uh, a lot of people in america will, will take a different view on that you know you know i think it, i have the right to and i should you know express that or i should you know take advantage of it but you know i just you don't feel the need to right okay. not that i don't think that it would counter anything it's just you know yeah, you know, I don't know. If people will say it's lazy, which I understand. But so uh, you do go occasionally on vacation to America, or you don't? I've only been to America uh, twice in the past uh, four years. Okay, okay. Yes. So you go for a quick visit and back. Right. Yeah. Uh, so the longest I was there was in uh, 2020, and that was for about a month. And then um, recently, I was and since then it was in May that I was there for eight days. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but after COVID, nobody traveled anyway. Right, yeah, and I happened to be in Afghanistan at that time, so. Oh, wow. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> travel was kind of limited. Right. Okay, so anyway, everything is opening up now. I mean, it's back to the normal traffic as before COVID. Uh, <laughs> I mean, people love to travel, right. especially especially if there are many <laughs> Uh, although it's discouraged for environmental issues not to use the airplane too much. Um, right. <laughs> so that's another facet of the travel industry. They should not encourage too much travel. Uh, they should, uh, although in America, we don't see that much advertising to travel to Jordan anyways. I mean, you the maybe we see a lot of advertising from Mexico or Europe, Paris. Um, yeah, okay. yeah, Jordan is very rarely seen on the, on the scene, excuse me, I'm, my power is going low, so I'm gonna put that. Yeah. 
there was a bird behind you i saw when you ducked over i, for that. I just saw barry down. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, so anyway yeah that's another thing um how much they encourage people to go there that that also makes a difference right yeah and, and just it being the middle east a lot of people are just uh they're scared you know that, that's the biggest belief i had I'm just talking with family and friends you know they they don't have a reason to go um okay. if they were okay. in a different industry it was it, you know, they, nobody, I don't know, it's just, for me, you know, seeing a bunch of old rocks, you know, really isn't appealing, but I know there's a lot of, but I love ar archaeology, and I love the ruins, and I love all that, but uh, I don't know that I would travel, you know, to go see it, you know, I, I spent uh, a couple months in uh, England, I never went to see uh, Stone. Oh, uh, okay. Was, yeah, but. Uh, but if you feel like you want to sunbathe, you, you have the beach not too far, like a half hour away. No, no, it's about uh, probably five or six hours driving down to Aqaba. Oh, really? Is that far? Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. So it is a, a a trip then. It's like... Uh... Yeah. And the Dead Sea is not really a beach. I mean, it, it's <laughs> sulfur smelling and yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it can be pleasurable. Certain the hotels around there and it's kind of a bucket list item, you know, the Dead Sea, get into the okay. water and all that. Yeah, so it's... people, what they do then in the summer, they go in the pool? They have a lot of pools. They do. Uh, that depends on their, your level of income and uh, your position and your status within the, this environment. Oh, okay, okay. So yeah. they anyway, it never gets too hot there anyway, right? I mean, it's like uh, California. <laughs> it, it can get pretty hot. It can get it into oh, uh, summer. Does? Okay. In summers, yes. Okay, and then yeah, people make the best of it then. Right. Okay, well, it seems that you have a pretty neutral, I would say, country that people live peacefully there. Um, they have a little bit of tourism, good uh, cost of living, right. uh, and you can raise big families there too. The majority of the uh, Jordanians do have big families, yes. They love children? Yes. Well, they, they love to, to build their family, if you will. Oh. Uh, so, I mean, in order to uh, be back in the states or back in the day, I guess you had to have you would have a big family for, and then the kids would take care of you know the parents as the they parents go when they get old. Yeah, yeah. So the, the family is huge. It, it's a one of the priorities that they experience. Oh yeah, that's the culture. They were here. It's the opposite. As soon as you're eighteen, the parents or twenty one, the parents send you to college in another yeah. state, and then they <laughs> they lose track of the kid. Um, right. <laughs> And then the kid visit the parents once a year or twice a year for Christmas <laughs> and, <laughs> and Thanksgiving. That's the culture. That's the culture. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's a totally different culture there. Yeah. Now, when I lived in the States, a uh, few years that I did, uh, I would visit family for holidays and you know, weddings, funerals, obviously. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah because... Uh, uh, is Christmas is big in Jordan or no? Um, so they didn't celebrate it this year because of what was happening in Israel. Uh, certain areas, but usually the really area that I live, it was something to be celebrated. Yes, it's not. They recognize it, uh, but it's not celebrated. You know, within the, like the Muslim America, where people yeah. buy, buy, buy. It's not yeah. a commercial venture. Correct. Yes, it's That's the 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 spiritual or religious side of it. I, that's yeah. much better that's the way it should be anyway right i mean right. It should not be let's buy as many toys as possible um <laughs> but yeah it's a it's a different kind of uh, setting as far as uh, keeping the family together which is good which is good i mean um as long as it makes them happy you know right. and this way they can pass on to the children, whatever they built in their lifetime and things like that. Right. In America, it's the opposite. The, the children surpass their parents in earnings. Uh, right. <laughs> because they go to higher education and then they become more successful than the parents in some cases. But yeah, it's a different culture. Um, so I think... Uh, uh, I think overall you have a good life there. I mean, you you don't seem to be complaining about too many things. 
No, I mean, I live within my means. Uh, I go to the places that are familiar, places that are, you know, are friendly. Uh, but yeah, I you don't I go, don't uh, but uh, you don't go, there are not too many uh, bars and clubs there. It's more like very family. There's there's plenty of bars, there's plenty of clubs. There are? There are? <laughs> yes. I didn't know that. Oh, they are. Okay. Yes. Okay. So if you want to listen to music, you can go somewhere. Yes. Yes. And they play American music, I guess. On, on occasion, some some restaurants or pubs or uh, bars will, uh, but uh, for the majority, Middle Eastern music. Uh, in in, yeah. So the ones that don't serve any alcohol usually are uh, playing uh, Middle Eastern or uh, Jordanian music. So, you, so after all these years, you acquired the taste for it, probably. Yes. So you enjoyed the the drums and all these. It, it can yeah. Um, on occasion, but it's uh, not a, a daily listen, you know, for festivals or weddings or parties or yeah, whatever. Yeah, it's very, very happy music, right? Yes, yes. And everybody joins in and everybody gets into it. So it's a, uh, yeah, it's quite an event. Oh, yeah, yeah. They have very good music too. I mean, yeah. uh, they have very joyous music. Right. So and that, uh, mean, that means yeah, that just people, last week when, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I said that means that the people are joyous. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, the uh, so Jordan uh, got second place in the Asia Cup just a couple weeks ago. Wow! And and so they were very happy about that. Even even just getting as high as they far along into the playoffs, there everybody was very excited about it. Wow, that's awesome! That's awesome! Yeah, they they just almost. I mean, I would say as good as Egyptians, but now they're even better. I think. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't follow soccer, so. But when they have it and it happens here, it's a big deal. The World Cup, especially, everybody's oh, really? got their team. Yeah, everyone's into it. I mean, that's within the region. That that's the number one sport. That's great. So you play it? <laughs> not since I was five. <laughs> oh, so it's not your thing. I see. You just watch it. Right. <laughs> yeah. And then, enjoy the. And then for American football, you just follow the results on TV. Uh, actually, I, I do watch those. So I uh, an application that you get, you know, through the internet, and I watch the games. Oh, you do? Okay, so yes. you don't just watch the results. <laughs> okay. Right. Yeah, I, I do that on occasion. Depends on what it is, um, but I will definitely watch uh, the Cowboys games. Yeah. Which, uh, some oh. San Francisco fans won't like. <laughs> it's your team. Okay. Okay. Right. Yeah, I hear it's the 49ers, but that just. I know. I just wait till the end to see if they lost. Uh, this year was kind of a bummer, you know. Yeah, just the that's end. unfortunate. But yeah, they, they, I would say they were equally good, both teams. They couldn't make it to the end, you know. They, but they had to stop at some point the game. So, But right. if they kept going, they could have won. I mean, uh, that's another commentary <laughs> uh, for <laughs> sports enthusiasts. Uh, so yeah. yeah, so sports is, is still good in uh, Jordan. Correct. Yes. Mostly European sports like soccer and yes, they they, the have, they have a team. Then they have a yes, they have a very good team. And the oddity about it is they only have one uh, professional player, um, and whereas the other clubs that they played against had you know seven or eight you know professional players from the European leagues. Oh wow! So yeah. as far as comp competing, they do compete. I'm sorry, did they I compete uh, to, with the European teams or no? No, no, they compete within the country. Uh, so the Asia Cup uh, was restricted to uh, the Middle Eastern areas. Okay. Uh, actually, no, I take that back. So well, they had a uh, South Korea they played against and beat. So the the Asia's. Oh, Asian countries. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. How interesting. Okay. As opposed to the the uh, the World Cup, where it's obviously you know worldwide European, European uh, mostly. Yeah. Well, Ar Argentina. I mean, they with the the win. Oh yeah, game. Argentina was part of it. Right. And now we're gonna lose our best player in France, uh, Kylian. <laughs> He's gonna go to Spain. I heard. Oh yeah. <laughs> gonna lose our most valuable player. Really? I get tired okay. of the French people. <laughs> they they just like mercenaries. They they go to any team they want. 
Oh. <laughs> Whoever offers them more money, 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 they go. Exactly. In America, also, kind of the team members could play for one team one year or another team the next year. That's up to them to decide. Mm. Uh, because we have seen stars in one team go to the to another team. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, it does happen in America. It depends how much they are offered, you know. Right, of course. Yeah, so, yeah, it looks like we touched on pretty much everything about Jordan. Um, I learned a lot, that's for sure, and I appreciate your time. I know you are very busy, but uh, thank you for your time, and I, I enjoyed talking to you. My pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good afternoon. Or okay. evening. Yes. Okay. <laughs>